if you've been watching these videos, you've been, uh, you, you're, you are aware of object-oriented programming. Everything we've been doing has really been kind of built on top of object-oriented programming. We write classes that are templates to make these objects that move around the screen. The objects have data and functionality that manage their physics and how they're drawn on the screen. And we've been doing this over and over again. This is, and, and the, the principle we've been kind of living by is called encapsulation. We are encapsulating all the data and functionality into this class, and we're making objects from it. This has been great. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've been enjoying it. But there is a missing piece here. There is another part of object-oriented programming that we haven't explored, and I think it's worth exploring in this thing that we're doing, whatever it may be, in, in making these videos or watching these videos or whatever it is we're doing. And that is this idea of inheritance and polymorphism. So, so let's think about this for a second. Um, OK, so right behind me over here, we have this <laughs> Uh, Vanna White over here, we have this particle system, right? We have this particle system, and it has this kind of generic particle. We've made this generic particle class. I could kind of click over here. We could see it. Click, come on. And we could see, sorry. Um, we have this generic particle class. It has location, velocity, acceleration. It's drawn as a circle. What if, however, we wanted to make this particle system full of all different kinds of particles. Star particles, and rainbow particles, and twirly particles, and blue particles. It's, they're all, they look different, they act different, but they're all basically the same. They're all in the same system. They all have a location, velocity, and acceleration. They all fall with gravity. How could we do this? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. On the one hand, we could just start adding lots more variables here and kind of have booleans like to keep track of which kind of particle should be drawn this way and do this thing. On the other hand, we could say, let's make some more classes. Let's, for example, make a star particle class. And, and if that was our instinct, we would go over to our program and we would say, <clears throat> uh, hello, program. And we would go over here and we'd say, new tab. And we'd make, type our new tab and we'd call it star particle. Ah, star particle tab. And we'd say, ah. My star particle, it's really basically the same thing as my particle. So let me go over here to my particle tab, and I'm just going to select all and hit copy. And then I'm going to go over here to star particle, and I'm going to hit paste. And I'm going to rename this star particle and type star particle here. And then I'm going to start modifying this code. So let me just say something here. Any time that you copy paste huge amounts of code from one section of your program to another, you should be suspicious. And you should ask yourself, if there, if, could there be a better way? Is there another organ, is there somebody else, has somebody else thought, encountered this situation before? And is there a better way that I could organize my code? And the answer to this is yes. In this scenario that we are talking ourselves through, where we're going to make a new kind of particle that's essentially the same with some slight modifications, this is where inheritance comes in. We want to say that our star particle inherits everything that a particle ever wanted to be in its life with a few slight changes that we're going to make to it. And let's look at, so, so before we can go and add this to this particular program, let's kind of map this out how it works um, over here, over, over there. I'll be right back. OK, we're back over here. Now, OK, so let's uh, forget about the particle system for a second, and let's just think about the animal kingdom. And let's say we are writing a class called mammal. Uh, class mammal curly bracket, close curly bracket. Now mammals, uh, they have generally have fur. They give live birth to their young. Uh, again, I have no actual knowledge of paleontology or science. Just you know things that I read in children's books, but. Um, but, but we, we could start making something up. We could say, OK, well, this is a program where we're simulating a mammal. And one of the things we're going to have is a color, which will be its fur color. And then another thing, we might, maybe we'll use a Boolean to describe its gender. Uh, you know, true for female, false for male, something like that. And, and we're going to write some functions. You know, what do mammals do? We need to have a function that we can call when it's time for the mammal to go to sleep. That's going to have some code in there. And we need to have a function when the, it's time for the mammal to eat. And we'll put some code in there. So, you know, we're writing this class. And we do this all the time with our mover, our particle. What, but let's say now we're, we, we've, we have this generic mammal. And now it's time to pick a mammal out of a hat. A uh, cat. I can't think of anything better. The internet loves cats. So um, we're going to, maybe we should make our class a kitten. So we'll just make our class a kitten. It's a little cuter. So we're going to write a kitten class, a class called kitten. 
And a kitten is also going to have a fur color, and a kitten is also going to have a gender. And a kitten's going to eat, and a kitten's going to sleep, and maybe a kitten's going to you know, purr and meow and have other things that it does too. So how do, how do we deal with this? <laughs> we could copy, paste all of this code so we start from the base mammal class, or we could use the principle of inheritance. And the way that we're going to use the principle of inheritance is with some new code that you, well, if you're watching this video, hopefully you haven't seen it before. If you have seen it before, turn it off and go, you know, watch Star Wars or something. Okay, class kitten extends mammal. This is pretty important. I hope it's not cut off. Extends mammal. This is the new syntax for inheritance. What we're saying is kitten is a child class of mammal. Mammal is a parent class of kitten. We also use the words superclass, subclass, um, but, but extends is the key word we write in our code to indicate that kitten extends mammal. And what this means is that kitten inherits everything from mammal. It's as if we wrote all the variables from mammal over here. We don't have to type them or write them in. They are assumed now. It's as if we wrote the identical sleep function. It's as if we wrote the identical eat function over here. So these are all the things that happen with inheritance automatically. Boom, we're done. We have, but basically a kitten class is done. So we have to ask ourselves, why are we doing this in the first place? We're doing this not because we want kitten to be an exact replica of a mammal, we want kitten to inherit everything that a mammal has, but also have some of its own things. So for example, uh, we might add, so, so I want to make a list. I really wish this whiteboard was bigger. So someday we're going to have some kind of sliding door whiteboard system. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just carve out a little space over here in the corner. <laughs> and I'm going to make a list of the things that you can do with inheritance. So number one is you, can in, you inherit everything. So we, now we see that. So a kitten has fur color, gender, it has a function called sleep, it has a function called eat. If we remember, that's what these functions were called. Sleep and eat. Okay. What's another thing that we can do? We can add data or functionality. Right? So we can add data or functionality. The kitten might have a, an, an integer, which is the number of whiskers, for example. So this is not something that all mammals have, I don't think. I, I'm a mammal, right? I don't have whiskers. Not really. Uh, anyway, so, um, but kittens have whiskers. So we can add variables that are only for the kitten. Um, we can also add functions. So maybe we might add a function called a meow. And meow is something that only kittens do, not all mammals do, so we're gonna, that's a piece of functionality we're going to add to the kitten class. Great. So we can, one of the things we can do with inheritance is we can inherit everything and then add to it. The other thing we can do, which uh, we'll use the term, is we can override functions. What do we mean by override functions? Well, it might be that, OK, so we, our mammal class has a function called sleep. All mammals sleep. Cats and dogs and uh, porcupines <laughs> and, I don't know, lots of other uh, interesting mammals that I wish I could think of right now that all sleep. So does a cat sleep? Yes, a cat does. A kitten sleeps. But what if a kitten sleeps in its own special way that's different than from how all the, 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 the sort of the, its parent class sleeps? So we can override a function. If I write the function sleep here, what this does is it says, well, instead of when, it, when, it, when I call kitten.sleep, instead of doing the, the functionality that was inherited, um, Execute the functionality that's now in my child class, that's now in my kitten class. So you can override, you can inherit functions, but you can always rewrite it in the child class to override that functionality. So that's one of the other things we can do with inheritance. The fourth thing, which I'm sort of making up, I guess, <laughs> I think I might be making all of this up because I just live in a crazy world with green screens and lights and whiteboards by myself. But uh, this, um, this thing that you can do, I, I'm going to call, is you can kind of inherit. You could just, I don't know what to call this. You can, you can override plus inherit. You can modify. You can kind of do both. You can, 
you can, you can, um, uh, I'm just going to write the word super. <laughs> this, this fourth thing you can do is really super. What it is, boy, did I botch this, is that you could say if you wanted to, I want to um, modify the sleep function, but also call what the, what the, what the, um, what happens in the parent sleep function. I, I can fix this problem that we've encountered. Let's be a little more specific. I'm going to write the mammal sleep class and the mammal sleep class, sorry, the mammal sleep function ugh, just has a print statement in it which says zzz, right, you print a bunch of z's. That's what it means for a mammal to sleep, you, you, a bunch of z's get printed out on the screen. Now, I'm going to override it and I'm going to say Sleep, no, no, no. A kitten does not zzz when it sleeps. What a kitten does is it says purr. Okay? So this is overriding. Mammals zzz, kittens purr. Boy, I'm really turning into a crazy person. So this is number three, overriding. But if we want, we could both inherit and override. So we could sort of inherit the function but add something to it. And the way that we do that is by saying super. I hope I'm getting this right, dot sleep. So what super dot sleep does is it allows you to call, what it does is it calls the functionality that's in the super class, the parent class. So now a, for a kitten to sleep, a kitten goes per z, per z. So without super dot sleep, it's just per. Without putting this in at all, it's just we inherit this z. Now we can do both. If we wanted to, we can always call the parent sleep function as well by using the keyword super. Okay, so uh, um, I realize that this is a lot of information here and you're probably going to need to practice this and you're going to need a scenario <laughs> for which it makes sense to do this. And I, was, I was promised myself yesterday that I was going to make these videos shorter and this one is already about uh, 12 minutes long, but uh, eventually the video Okay, I had a little mishap, but I just want to wrap up this video. So what we've done in this video here is we've kind of mapped out what it means to, do, to have inheritance. So um, in the next video, what we're actually going to go do is start, we're going we're to look at inheriting the particle class and making a new particle object that inherits everything but adds a little bit of functionality to it. So we're going to see how to do that in the next video. What I would suggest to you as an exercise before you watch it is try to do that yourself. Could you actually make a star particle, which is everything that a particle was but draws itself as a star, maybe the star spins or something like that. See if you can do that yourself and um, in the next video we're going to, we will essentially, uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. So um, that's it for this video. <laughs>